and it's easy to forget the havoc that is wreaked on people's lives uh, as the consequences of a truly unaccountable media come, come out more and more into the open. And of course, one of those consequences is not just individual lives, but it's also the development of policy. And one of the big policy stories that's been running alongside Leveson has been the privatisation of the NHS. And our next speaker, Jackie Davis, is co-chair of the NHS Consultants Association and a founder member of Keep Our NHS Public. And she has been um, very outspoken, among others, about the public relations smokescreen which blinded much of the media coverage over the NHS bill. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, thanks for asking me today. I think I'm a little pleased compared to a real dramatic story, but I think this is a very important issue to talk about. I've been asked to say something about one of our nation's great institutions um, and how it failed another of our nation's great institutions in its hour of need. In short, how the media uh, failed the NHS when it was under full frontal assault by the coalition. It's worth reflecting on the seriousness of this failure of the passage of the unwanted, unneeded, and a completely undemocratic health and social care bill, we no longer have a national health service. England has been split from the devolved nations, and the English NHS, internationally recognised as being cost-effective, equitable, with good outcomes, has been delivered up to the mercies of the market. It is already happening. Virgin, who have funded MPs for years, already have partnerships with 350 medical centres. They have taken over community services in parts of Surrey, and they're shortlisted along with Serco to provide frontline services for children in Devon. They've already taken the NHS to court over losing a contract because, get this, they accused the NHS of charging too little for services. And this is just the beginning of what we're going to hear. How did the coalition get away with this under our noses? Part of the blame, I'm afraid, has to lie with the media and their abysmal failure to cover this story properly. There were some shining examples. The Guardian covered this brilliantly from day one. But everybody else, I'm afraid, was too little and too late. And the real problem for us, I'm sorry to say, were uh, the BBC, whose failure to give adequate and unbiased coverage for 18 months while this was going through Parliament was a tragedy. The media cover coverage in general was lazy. The bill was complex, you know, it was the size of the Old Testament, let's face it, and nobody actually sat down and read the thing. It was confused and it was dangerous, but reporters constantly referred to it as giving money to GPs and power to patients, which was just regurgitating the government's propaganda. That was still a news, a news strap line on the BBC on the day that the bill went through. On news and current affairs programmes, there was a conspicuous absence of informed opponents taking part in the debate. The closest, the closest I heard from the opponent was Shirley Williams, which quite frankly is like asking James Murdoch to defend the BBC. There was a terrible lack of investigative journalism. The lies told by the coalition to justify the reforms were repeated undigested, and it was left to medical academics in medical journals to expose them. We heard little, if anything, about the fact that Andrew Lance's office was bankrolled by the chairman of Care UK, 96% of whose business came through, comes through the NHS. This was hardly ever mentioned during uh, in media interviews, nor party funding by the private health sector. We heard little, if anything, about the fact that 142 peers who were voting, making, taking crucial votes on the bill, have financial connections with the private health sector, including one in four Tory peers. We heard little about the infiltration of the public by the private sector, with, for example, Virgin's commercial director sitting on the committee which is redesigning the NHS constitution. I have to say, for those of you who follow the social media, Twitter and everything else were full of comments about the poor and biased coverage, and it's not surprising that rumours circulated that deals have been done with the coalition to smother this debate. A lot of people, I know, wrote from the campaigning world to complain, particularly to the BBC, but nothing changed. And there was concern from within the BBC, and this is an email from a BBC employee, and I'm re just reading this out word for word. The BBC, under non-reporting of the opposition to the bill, is even more of a mystery after I've read over the BBC news brief. There are many pages of text on the opposition to the bill. People have clearly gone to a great deal of effort enumerating the objections, 
And there is a long, comprehensive and regularly updated list outlining the latest views of all the professional bodies. All the fact-checking and detail anyone needs to run a detailed story on your position the bill is there. And there are no official restrictions on reporting it, but somehow it still isn't happening. I can't make sense of it. A subsequent Freedom of Information request for the number of complaints about the BBC coverage has been refused by the BBC. So the media by and large failed. They failed to challenge Lansley on his interests. They failed to unearth the extent of the links to private health care. They failed to explain what the bill really meant and how very dangerous it was. Is it that we're up against a poisonous nexus of politicians, business interests and media? Yeah. Sometimes it feels like that when you're campaigning. I was reading today that the BBC suffers from a self-defeating paranoia about left-wing bias, which makes them overcompensate. We know the BBC was accused of being anti-Iraq war, but an academic study found that the BBC had displayed the most pro-war agenda of any British broadcaster with only 2% of its coverage of the invasion of Iraq to anti-war voices. So for somebody like me, who's not in the media, but who has come up against the media during this, the campaign against this terrible, terrible bill, and you'll be hearing lots more about it in the future, uh, I, I'd like to know what the answers are. I hope someone does the same analysis about um, how the bill was covered, because the media and the NHS are two of our great institutions, and it's really right that they should stand up for each other. Thank you.